Ukrainian like it's 1999. Oh, this, this Ukraine I he's got is on yeah. his boats. I was having right, so, the same parts, man. We are talking doom and gloom versus the optimist tonight. Bill Spiropoulos is CEO at Core State's Capital Advisor. Bill, you say this you're kind of a large almighty. masked uh, bull. Explain. A very large masked bull because it's uh, you got to be shh. It's very uh, unvogue to say anything positive or believe that America is not going to go into a catastrophe and, and evaporate. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is this. The, uh, the storm has passed and there's a tremendous opportunity out there. And yet I looked at uh, <sighs> where you're putting your stocks, et cetera, and, and the percentage you want me to put in stocks, you're acting like I'm 65 years old. That seems kind of timid. Didn't you call yourself a bull? Well, you know, bull bear is a state of mind. The name of the game is to manage risk. The name of the game is to <sighs> seek opportunity. The name of the game is create wealth. And it doesn't always have to be in a particular space. Um, we like uh, stocks, currencies, managed futures, all the major markets as rich opportunities. Okay, let's reconcile the, the managing risk with the idea that you're a mass bull and you're, you're roaring and snorting and you got that whole thing going on <laughs> with the idea that you're still kind of relatively conservative. If I'm as bullish as you are, I'm buying stocks hand over fist. The currency trade I'm not crazy about because Helicopter Ben's dropping it all over the place. It's a relative thing. We've got a huge currency fight and we're trying to reflate. Why aren't you buying stocks hand over tea kettle? Well, they're, they're, you should buy stocks. We are buying stocks and the, uh, the same approach in the uh, uh, managed futures. You look at energy, you look at oil, you look at the uh, currency spreads. It's, there's tremendous opportunities. And I think what worked best for us over the last 24 months is by having a um, tremendous amount of uh, low correlation amongst the different uh, market campaigns. And I think that is the, uh, the one thing that differentiates uh, what we did and what lots of others did. Jeff, I want to first ask you, and then Bill, bring you in. I want to get into the marketing of soothsayers, okay? Let, let's talk about Rubini, okay? Let's talk about he predicted the end as a result of Katrina. That didn't happen. He predicted the end as a result of trade imbalance. Didn't happen for that reason. A broken clock is right twice a day. How much do these guys become self like they almost become acts where they're expected to say something. They're not going to get the girls unless they say it. They're not going to be on TV unless they say it. Uh, I'm not saying he hasn't been right a lot of the times, but don't we create these marketing critters, Jeff? Or yeah. as a trader, is this guy brilliant? Yeah, as, as a trader, he's a marketer is what happens. And I don't mean our guest in particular tonight, but you're talking to people who generally have mandates where they're 97, 98 percent invested in stocks on the long side and so what they're, they're bullish as it turns out usually speaking or you have academics who can predict doom and gloom and that's always a pretty easy sell as well the key is i'm an individual trader i got to eat what i kill therefore i don't have christmas if i don't make money and so i don't have the luxury of being bullish and bearish in the very long term and declaring victory four years from now because something i saw coming turns out and we're the housing market crisis was a classic example one of the all times that's something that you know, everyone saw that coming. I don't know a single person who was daft enough to think that all of a sudden you should be making money out of your house and did not know that was coming. The timing of it, well, that was the hard part. Hey, Bill, it's, uh, it's, it's much harder, isn't it, to be a bull than it is to be a bear. If I predict doom and it doesn't happen, people are relieved and no one gets upset. <laughs> if you predict good things and they don't happen, your clients are really miffed. Kill him. <laughs> Hang him. <laughs> Take his children and sell them as slaves. You know, it's a uh, it's a brutal business when you're an advisor. But yeah. you know that the art is to make sure that you avoid the big downdrafts. Um, that's the magic. I mean, the Walking Dead make money in bull markets and up cycles, and yeah, that's not what it's about. You know, it's it's avoiding those 40, 50, 60 percent capital destroyers. And we've seen lots of those in the last uh, 12 months, haven't we? And uh, we saw a ton of them. Everyone bought into the brick concept. What was your magic for it? Did you just, you, you didn't buy into it to begin with? Did you use technicals? How did you know it was bull? How did you know to get out? You're not going to like this. It was I'll take it out of it, It was common sense. When I saw, I saw oh, knuckleheads wow. that were running to the bank and borrowing huge sums of money and, and doing uh, uh, condo conversions from apartment to condo. And it's going to be easy. We'll make a zillion percent. And stupid bank gave them uh, 110 percent. Bill, we got to Bill, we got to roll it out here. They're playing that music. Uh, thanks so much, man. Uh, I love your bullishness. Hey guys, we got bullet points up next. Madoff's sons and brother. Banks freezing their stuff. Loving it. Part of our bullet point. You happy? Like why? Why didn't they do this months ago? Like, I don't, don't know. Really understand. We got bullet points up next. <laughs>